Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Corp Productions. I'm really happy to see that you've made it all the way to part three. And of course, if you haven't seen part one or part two, uh, definitely go ahead and check them out because that is pretty much where we set up everything and what leads to this final step, which is adding a little bit of lighting, uh, just polishing up the explosion and adding a little bit of extra detail. So let's pick things right back up where we left them off in part two and let's finish up this epic explosion. Okay, so the very final things that we were doing in part two is just adding a little bit of pretty much just color correction on the explosions, making them a little bit less yellowish. And you can see here that I added a little bit of curves and some tint effects to, to pretty much just bring the colors of those explosions, those fireballs, to a deeper uh, orange, reddish color. So this is what we have so far, it's looking pretty good, but now we just need to make it sit a little bit better with its environment. Uh, now we did that in terms of shadows and creating some fake ambient occlusion, adding some cracks, so it is interacting a little bit with our scene, but we want to make sure that it's also interacting in terms of lighting, and you know, since this explosion is emitting quite a bit of light with all this fire that it's containing. So we're going to do this in a couple of ways. First, we're going to create a new solid, and we're going to create sort of a glow around the explosion. So I'm going to right click, new solid and we're going to pick a color that matches the the fiery part of our explosion so i'm going to go for like a, a bit of an orangish color and then uh maybe make it a little bit more red there we go yeah that's pretty good so click ok and now what we're going to do is create an elliptical mask just sort of around the main part of the explosion where the fire is uh, showing up and then we're going to feather that mask out and then uh, of course we can set it to add so you can sort of see where we're going here. It's creating this sort of really bright glow uh, around the explosion. Of course, we can adjust the mask just a little bit so that it's fitting a little bit more with the shape of our explosion in our scene. Now, it's always a good idea to adjust the anchor point. And uh, since we've done that, actually, we're gonna animate the scale so that as the explosion is expanding or you know expanding out or exploding, uh, <laughs> we're gonna decrease the scale. Now probably a better way of doing this is to actually animate the mask path so that we don't see any sharp edges. But you know, I'm gonna just decrease the, the feather of this mask um, as it shrinks down so we don't notice any of those sharp edges. So there we go, it's not looking too great, but what we're gonna do is uh, make it a little bit more subtle. So we're gonna animate the opacity and uh, we can make it really bright where it completely erupts. But then as it shrinks down, you know, we can make it more subtle. And this is all personal preference. You can make it really bright when it first uh, initially explodes so that you have a kind of a bright flash and then you can dim it down as the explosion continues to happen. This again is all preference. So, you know, animate the opacity depending on how you want your explosion to look. You can make it really, really intense in the beginning and then it sort of fades out or has sort of a middle point. So, so again, it's always a good idea to have a uh, reference video of a real life explosion and sort of base your decisions on that. The next thing that we can do is just add a little bit more of, uh, of detail, you know, adding some debris. Uh, since these guys are sort of exploding out, we can add some blood. You can go as detailed as you want with this. But for now, I'm just going to add some debris just spreading out, and then we're uh, later going to be adding some dust waves. So we're pretty much repeating the same steps over and over um, that we did in part one and part two. So we're, you know, adding some assets into our timeline. We're uh, time remapping them to make them a little bit faster, depending on you know, again, what your needs are. And then we're making them 3D layers and we're placing them in our scene correctly by, you know, by copying the position of our track nulls that we created in part one and then pasting that uh, information on our new assets. So this is pretty much the same step that we did. Uh, nothing new here. Again, adjusting the anchor point, that's always important so you can, you know, scale things up and scale things down and it won't look weird or, you know, move in places that you don't want it to move. Then again, it's always a good idea to blur out your elements. In this case, I'm adding again a radio blur, uh, setting my blur type to zoom so that it's these elements are shooting out. So it has uh, sort of this fake motion blur to it. And of course, we can do the same thing within our explosion comp. If you remember in part one, we, we set up our, our main explosion elements to be all in one composition. So we can add some 3D elements such as debris and even some dirt charges in this um, composition. Uh, this way we can sort of place elements in between certain layers of the explosion itself. So I'm trying to keep this tutorial short, so you pretty much get the point. We're repeating the same steps, so I'm going to just speed through this part. I'm just pretty much adding some, some dirt charges and I'm placing them uh, and rotating them in between all the layers of our blast and our explosion comp. 
So obviously the name of the game here is to just add as much detail as possible. You know, take your time. Um, don't do like I'm doing. I'm just adding a few things here and there uh, as examples just to make it look okay. But obviously if you're doing an explosion for your project, you sort of want to nurture it like it's your own baby. That's weird. I don't know. Uh, you get the point. You want to spend a lot of time and make sure that every detail is perfect um, because, you know, this is your work and you should take some pride into it. So spending a lot of time in these steps, adding as much detail, making your explosions uh, complex is, uh, is definitely something that will pay off in the end because explosions in real life are complex. You know, there's all kinds of different things happening and, um, you know, you, it, the more time you spend in adding all those little details, the more realistic it will be in the end. So you can see that it's not just about placement, it's also about making the match with the rest of the explosion. So if I'm adding some dirt charges, you know, you might want to add some tint effects, some curves. So I'm noticing that our explosion is facing sort of the wrong direction because these, these holes in, in the walls that we have here, these, these windows, yeah, holes and walls are called windows. Uh, yeah, they're on the left side of our scene and that's where most of our light is coming in from. So it's sort of weird to see that the brighter side of our explosion in these, especially in these dust clouds that you see, um, you know, from our original blaster, sort of facing the wrong way. Obviously, we're going to have to reposition it. It's going to look a little bit weird. But you can see that right off the bat, it's looking a little bit better. So let's obviously move these to where they should be. And um, since we have to move them, I'm just going to make these a 3D layer. And now our compositions, you can see that it has all of the outlines of all the elements that we have inside that composition. So now we can sort of rotate it and we can uh, move this explosion around, um, you know, a little bit better than just moving a flat thing. So right now we can see that that has done quite a bit for us. It's, it's interacting with our scene a lot better. Um, the lighting just feels right now. Before it was a little bit off. And this is also a mistake that I did in the original short and the original Call of Duty short. So again, you know, you, when you're rushing through things, stuff like this is gonna happen. So anyways, I duplicated our explosion comp, our top layer, and I'm gonna add a brightness and contrast effect. And I'm gonna bump up the brightness all the way up and we're gonna create a circular mask right where this window is. And this is sort of just to add to the idea that, you know, this explosion is being illuminated by the light coming through these windows. So you can feather the mask out and then you can set that layer to add. And again, it's a subtle touch, but I think it adds a lot to the, uh, to the realism of this explosion. You can mess around with the opacity and make it as intense uh, and noticeable as you want it to be. So this is looking pretty good, uh, definitely a lot better than before. So the next thing to do would be adding some dust waves, you know, just uh, sort of give the idea that this, this explosion is, is pushing some, some dirt off the ground and it's just further add some impact. So I'm using some dust waves from Action Essentials 2 and what we're gonna do is create a circular mask and feather it out just so we don't see any sharp edges since we're gonna be placing these in 3D, uh, in 3D space and we wanna make sure that we don't see any uh, part of the video cutting off. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna add a, um, a tint effect just to uh, match the color of, of this dust wave to our, our ground here. Looking okay. Um, we're gonna have to make multiple copies of this, uh, of this dust wave, maybe offset a little bit so it's, it's not the same thing over and over. And then we can push it closer to the camera. And this is gonna be great in the end because it's gonna add a lot of parallax between um, you know, all this atmospheric effects that we're adding. And it's gonna really sell the idea that this explosion is again a 3D a real thing living in our scene and not just a flat uh, visual effects that was just slapped onto the video. So you can make as many copies as you, as you want with this, you know, go as intricate. And of course you're gonna run into some problems. You're gonna have to uh, maybe uh, set the anchor point down to where the explosion starts. And then you can animate the scale of some of these dust waves so that they, uh, they sort of expand out from the explosion. And, um, and you know, th this all depends on what kind of assets you're using. And then of course, uh, maybe offsetting them is not enough. They still look a little bit to the same, so you can flip them around and uh, just play around with them, make them look different, you use different assets, you know, just make sure that nothing in your scene looks like a clone of another asset, because it, it might be something that not a lot of people notice, but, but having identical things in your scene is, is a dead giveaway that it's fake. So, you know, just be aware of that. And I'm just gonna, again, speed through this because we're repeating the same steps. It's just, again, adding assets into your scene, just like we did before. Uh, in this case, it's just these dust waves that we're separating out in 3D space, pretty much exactly like what we did in our original blast, where we separated different parts of the explosion out in 3D space to, again, give that sense of parallax and movement.
All right, so the final step that we're gonna be doing for this tutorial is adding some optical flares. Now, if you don't have the plugin, it's no big deal. It's already looking pretty good. This is just another extra uh, step that we can take to polish it. So what I'm gonna do is create a new light. And as soon as I do that, you can see that our explosion and everything that we did looks really, really wrong. So we're gonna fix that in a second, but for now, let's place this light where it needs to be. So let's copy the position information from our track solid, paste it onto our light. And yeah, it's doing some really weird stuff. A way to avoid this is to pretty much turn off uh, except lights in all of your 3D layers. So I'm hitting AA on my keyboard with the layer selected and I'm uh, turning except lights to off and I'm just being through this like super crazy because that's boring. I have to do this for every single layer and um, essentially it's telling all the 3D layers to pretty much just ignore that light because we're not using that 3D light to light our scene we're actually only gonna be using it as a point of reference for optical flares to place its lens flare. So we're gonna create a new solid, and this is gonna be for our optical flares effect, so it doesn't matter what color it is. Then we're gonna go under effects, video copilot, optical flares, and this is just gonna add a default flare to that solid. And now watch what happens when I say track lights. You can see that the, the lens flare is now placed where we placed our light. So we can just toggle all these options off. And before we do anything else, let's, let's play around with our lens flare, let's make it look Cool. I'm, again, I'm going to speed through all this because I'm just pretty much just picking different elements from the, the lens objects library that comes with optical flares. And I don't want anything too crazy, you know, no uh, Michael Bay or J.J. Abrams here. I just want something really subtle, maybe uh, something to highlight some of the dirt on the lens just to add some grittiness and some, just some grunginess to this explosion. So let's uh, make this lens flare subtle but with the colors of our explosion and then I'm going to check this box that says disable 3D perspective and then you can set that layer to add so you can see what that's doing it's looking pretty good fits well with the colors of our scene but now what we want to do is uh, animate the brightness amount of, of this lens flare we don't want it to just be there all the time we want it to pop on uh, where when the explosion happens so again we're doing the same thing that we did with that solid uh, where we create the glow effect. Instead of animating the opacity to become more intense and less intense, we're animating the brightness of this lens flare. And uh, we can add some smooth flickering uh, caused by you know the fire being of different intensity at different points. So I think that's where I'm gonna end this tutorial. Um, there's gonna be a few extra bonus videos at the end, so definitely stick around. But before you guys click away, I just wanna mention something real quick. It's a Kickstarter campaign that a very talented VFX artist Rody Polis is, uh, is doing right now on Kickstarter. And you can see here, he has some pretty epic explosions. And the reason why I wanna mention him is because we took a lot of steps into uh, making our explosion epic and making it realistic and working with some of the limitations that come with the assets that we use. But what Rody Polis is, is offering is something a little bit different. And it's just these 4K huge explosions that honestly take off some of the limitations that we previously had with some of the other assets. I still think that some of the other packs like Action Essentials 2 and Detonation Films of what we use today are great, but he offers something a little bit different and something on a much larger scale. I mean, he partnered up with people that worked on Transformers 3, so he definitely was able to create some amazing pyrotechnics. So definitely check out his Kickstarter campaign, help him out, it's still open. And uh, obviously these assets that he's gonna be providing are amazing. So just wanted to mention this real quick. And also since this tutorial was super long, as you can see on screen, I created three extra tutorials. One is creating a shockwave effect for this explosion and adding a camera shake. And then finally is deleting people from, from your scene, which is something that I mentioned in part one, since uh, we sort of still see the people even after the explosion happens. So all those are just some bonus videos because this tutorial was getting really, really long and I didn't want to bore you guys too much if you weren't interested in creating that kind of stuff. But I really recommend you guys check those tutorials out because uh, they have some neat little tricks uh, that can uh, help you out in your, your own explosion visual effects. Anyways, guys, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Corp Productions. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.